Honestly, sometimes I, I, I don't know what I could offer them because even from afar, you see the struggles and the hardships and the unbelievable amount of courage and strength and resilience that these women need to have, um, especially when you lose loved ones. I believe there's a value called Sumer in Arabic, um, and it's an ideology amongst women, Palestinian women, to sort of steadfastly persevere against all forms of injustice. Malisa has always been on the side of justice, people and government supporting the people of Palestine in their struggle for freedom, justice, and national independence. In order to talk about all that, we have via Skype from Malija, our ambassador, Mr. Walid Abu Ali. Welcome, Ambassador. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. A former minister of youth and the sport, Sayyid Sadiq Sayyid. Welcome to the program, Sayyid Sadiq. Assalamu alaikum. And you're welcome. And also we have uh, Miss Universe Malaysia, Dipoa Henry, the founder of Refugees Foundation. Welcome to the program, Dipoa. Thank you very much. We are going to start with the ambassador to Malaysia, Mr. Walid Abu Ali. Tell us about the position of the Malaysian government and the Malaysian people of the current situation in Palestine in light of the last Israeli aggression on Jerusalem yesterday, organizing what it is called the March of the Flags and the violations against the Palestinian youth, women and children just yesterday in Jerusalem and today morning the Israeli air raid on the Gaza Strip. You will come, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear uh, Osama. I'm grateful uh, for Palestinian TV to organize such event. Of course, uh, it's not new for Malaysians. Uh, if there are some uh, differences in Malaysia, Palestine usually unify all Malaysians. Yeah. And the great support of Malaysians uh, to Palestine, it's not questionable. The government and the people of Malaysia always show their solidarity and support to Palestine. Yeah, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for this inclusive introduction, really. And I move now to uh, His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Sayyid Sadiq. Sayyid Sadiq, uh, I watched some uh, videos for you and uh, heard your statements in support of the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people's rights. And I want you to tell us what are the grounds of your position and the support for the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people, please. Thank you. I support Palestine not just because I'm a Malaysian or a Muslim. Yes. I support Palestine because this is an issue which involves humanity overall. A clear violation of international law, humanitarian law, by the Israeli occupants, especially previously under the government of Benjamin Netanyahu. That's why I believe that it's not just Malaysia, but people and governments across the world should unite to speak out and condemn the brutal human rights violations, war crimes and atrocities committed by the Israeli government. And the fact that even after the change in government, now led under Naftali Bennett, the yes. still same aggression takes place is truly saddening and should be condemned. The ultra-nationalist march towards Jerusalem was a clear act of provocation. The fact that it took place right after a ceasefire was brokered between Israel and Palestine clearly shows that they want violence and they were chanting during the march, death to Palestine, death to Arabs. How do you expect 
peaceful Palestinians to react and respond to this after just weeks ago, more than 250 Palestinians were massacred and murdered. And right after that, after the peace was brokered, this um, provocative ultra-nationalist march took place. I think this is a clear act of provocation and the international community should not sit silent and condemn not just the previous Israeli government, but the new government led under Naftali Bennett. Yes, and uh, Ms. Deborah, as our ambassador said that you founded the foundation for supporting refugees and we know that half of the Palestinian people are refugees. And we want to talk about the refugees living in the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah in occupied Jerusalem because the Israeli government has taken a decision to expel them. And we know that these people there are refugees from Palestine occupied in 1948. So how you express your support for these people there? Well, it is extremely sad. And, and this is why I set up a nonprofit because of injustice. Mm -hmm. And that for people around the world to understand that refugees don't just leave their country to come to Malaysia, for example, but they also can be refugees within their own state, internally displaced people. Um, so I've been following the stories of, of individuals like Mohammed El Kurd mm -hmm. and to see what's going on on the ground. And, and what I think is so important nowadays is that we're hearing the stories of the youth and right directly from their mouth because we see it on their social media. And it is extremely sad that basic rights are not met, access to education, healthcare, um, yes. livelihoods, and the huge unemployment, but yes. also that people cannot live with dignity yeah. And that, I think, is one of the most important aspects of human life. Yeah. And so my job is to tell, tell that story uh, for people to know. Because if people don't know what's happening, they will not be informed and empowered to do something. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dibor. And uh, Mr. Uh, Sayed, uh, your position as MP, the, the Parliament of uh, Malija, what activities you have and connections with other parliaments around the world in order to build up these parliaments support for the rights of the Palestinian people and the Palestinian cause, whether the Asian countries' parliaments or parliaments around the world in general? There are three key things. Firstly, yes. when I served as the Minister of Youth and Sports, I stood solidly in support of Palestine and when there were Israeli athletes who wanted to come to Malaysia, I disallowed as long as the ban uh, on Palestinian athletes to play without travel restrictions from Israel was still placed. So if Israel can play politics in sports, Malaysia should respond in defense of our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Secondly, after the recent crisis between Palestine and Israel, not just me, but many members of parliament across party lines, those in government and opposition, work together by contacting our international counterparts, members of parliament across Asia and Europe to come up with a united statement condemning the disproportionate response from the Israeli Defense Force. And finally, all of us came together, those in government and opposition, together with NGO representatives to fundraise for Palestinian NGOs to ensure that the rebuilding of Palestine can be done together. We treat Palestinians as our brothers and sisters to the point of those who choose to insult and assault Palestine is equivalent to insult and assaulting fellow Malaysians. Yeah, and uh, Ms. Deborah, a relevant question. I know that uh, you have a very significant role when it comes to humanitarian affairs and the humanitarian assistance when it comes to the issues of uh, children. And we watch all the time the Israeli soldiers and the Israeli colonizers' violence against the Palestinian children in particular. And we saw the massacres committed in Gaza. So how do you use your position and your foundation for networking with other civil society organizations non-profit organizations in order to make the situation of these children 
visible and you support them at international level. Yes, thank you. So the reality is we get caught up in the, the news of war, what we see on the TV stations. Yeah. Um, it becomes politicized and it becomes very complicated. And so a lot of people don't want to deal with it and they stay away from it. They don't think that they can make a difference. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is tell the human story that the numbers are not just, when we talk about 60 something children who died in the recent bombings, mm -hmm. they have faces, they have stories. And so how do we tell this story of the child? Because very often during conflict, like situations like this, children suffer the most and in silence. And the trauma that they experience goes on for generations. Uh, yeah. So it is very important that they get the right support and the right help, regardless of whether the conflict stops or doesn't, is that they are being taken care of. And so we work with many different organizations in Malaysia mm -hmm. and globally. So and number one is to, to do advocacy, to, to talk about it, to share the faces, to help, help people understand what children are going through. And also then to give people options of how they can help. And yeah. number one is education. We've seen in Malaysia, huge amounts of fundraising over the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. Even my own um, uh, business, we've, we make jewelry and we've, been, we've dedicated a percentage of that money to Palestinian refugees in Malaysia. And so telling the story, showing people how they can really help mm -hmm. and that every individual can make a difference and yeah. can change the life of a child. Yeah, and uh, Ambassador uh, Abu Ali, you have these great people uh, with you who support justice and the freedom, not only for the people of Palestine, but for humanity in general. Tell us about the connection between the embassy, the Palestinian embassy, and the uh, parliament of Malaysia and its members like uh, Sayyid Sadiq, and also with non-profit organizations and civil society organizations in Malaysia to garner support for the cause of Palestine. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a very important question. The embassy is the legitimate representative of Palestine in Malaysia. And just uh, let me highlight that uh, the parliament, uh, uh, its last session, uh, had created uh, a booth at the parliament mm -hmm. under uh, a very uh, effective title, Unite for Palestine. And uh, the committee for Palestine within the parliament had uh, asked all parliamentarians to sign a statement. So the, that statement uh, through the committee handed over to the embassy. At the same time, they initiated a bank account through Wisma Putra, which is the foreign ministry of Malaysia. And this bank account for Palestine was activated. So we coordinated with the foreign ministry in Malaysia that any fundraising for Palestine can be uh, processed through this bank account in Wasmaputra. And the Foreign Minister, uh, Excellency Shabdin Hussein himself, and his deputy, uh, that Kamaruddin Jafar, are supervising by themselves the process of the fundraising and tra the transaction of the money to Palestine. We arranged a program the Red Crescent of Malaysia, together with the Red Crescent of Palestine and the Malaysia government and NGOs are very much active and working shoulder to shoulder uh, to help as much as they can, in particularly the homeless Palestinians and to rebuild what has been damaged by the Israeli aggression against us. Yeah, and uh, two more questions uh, to Mr. Uh, Sayyid Sadiq and uh, Ms. Uh, Deborah. Uh, Sayyid uh, Sadiq, 
uh, when you were uh, the Minister of Youth and the Sport and you called and uh, you translated that into action, uh, preventing Israeli athletes from entering Malaysia for a power swimming uh, competition. And some people said that we should not mix between politics and the sport. But you proved that boycott should include all aspects of colonial life in order to achieve justice for the colonized people. Do you have now any activities or uh, any connections uh, to support the BDS to force Israel to end its occupation for the Palestinian land? I just want to point out that if it's up to me, I wouldn't want to conflate yeah. sports and politics. Unfortunately, it was Israel first who banned Palestinian athletes from representing their state in international community by putting many unnecessary and illegitimate travel restrictions for Palestinian teams to represent themselves. Let's not forget that Gaza's Iltihad al Shajira sports team was banned by Israel from representing Gaza. Yeah. Let's not forget that the Israeli government, through the sports minister, placed pressure on NBA in the United States from even mentioning Palestine as a legitimate state. So I believe if no other countries out there would have the backbone to stand for Palestine, the least that Malaysia can do is to speak up on behalf of Palestine. And the BDSM movement in Malaysia is well known. And that's where we see many companies which are directly linked to funding or supporting IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, uh, have been boycotted either directly or indirectly. So Malaysians, regardless of race and religion, uh, are very conscious of the Palestinian plights and the sufferings which they go through. And I believe as the... Uh, as His Excellency, the Ambassador pointed out, issues of Palestine is one of the rare issues which could directly unite all Malaysians, all politicians, all corporates, because this is something which is close to our heart, because we see it as a, humanita or as, as a humanitarian issue, not just as an issue which involves politics, race and religion. Thank you, thank you, Sayyid Sadiq. And uh, Deborah, you are also active in the field of women and you know that the situation of the Palestinian women is very special just yesterday in Jerusalem we saw the Israeli police kicking and punching dropping women on uh, the ground uh, women in Palestine are losing their children at the hands of the Israeli occupation uh, soldiers uh, women are deprived of the right to a free movement so the, the whole picture when it comes to the Palestinian women under Israeli occupation is gloomy. And many, many women now are hitting their families without husbands, you know, b being killed by the Israeli uh, aggression on, on the Gaza Strip. So what is your message to the Palestinian women who have this very special situation in Palestine? Um, thank you for that. I honestly, sometimes I, I, I don't know what I could offer them because even from afar, you see the struggles and the hardships and the unbelievable amount of courage and strength and resilience that these women need to have, um, especially when you lose loved ones. I believe there's a value called sumud in Arabic, um, and it's an ideology amongst women, Palestinian women, to sort of steadfastly persevere against all forms of injustice. Um, and, I, and I think that really sums it up. They have to be strong for their children and, and the young girls and the young boys. The way I look at it is we can't keep having generation after generation growing up with the bitterness and the resentment and the hate and the cycle will never stop. What I see now on social media is the youth coming alive. They have a voice and they're using it and they are being heard, not just by, as we talked earlier, by Muslims or countries that traditionally have always supported Palestine, but also the world at large. 
And so I think this is a very special moment for our young men, young women um, to, to unite the youth of the world. And, and I really see this as being a, a time unlike any before where we can really make change happen um, on, as uh, Said Sadiq said, humanitarian grounds, because this is just wrong and unjust what's happening. Yeah. And, and we cannot see more children suffer. Yeah. So my, my short um, you know, prayer and solidarity with these women, is to, women and children is to know that the world is with you, we are with you, um, and we do what we can in our ways, um, big and small, um, to, to support you and to say we see you and we feel your pain um, and, uh, and we, we stand with you to hopefully make this apartheid end. Yeah, uh, Deborah Henry, founder of Refugees Foundation, thank you very much. Ambassador to Malaysia, uh, Walid Abu Ali, thank you. And MP, former Minister of Youth and the Sport of Malaysia, Sayed Sadiq Sayed, thank you very much all for joining our thank program. You. It has been a great pleasure, really. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And from me, Osama Nazal, goodbye.